hi guys welcome to this channel in this video i'm going to be discussing about structural loads on beams and we'll be focusing on buildings so let us talk about what do we mean by a beam a beam is majorly a horizontal structural element that is used primarily to either distribute load or serve as a stiffener a beam distributes load when it supports suspended slabs or it can even be used as a distributor when it supports roofing system. So it distributes the load from the slab or from the roof to the vertical members, which can include walls and columns. A beam can also act as a stiffener in case of foundation. Whenever you have a ground beam, the purpose of it is just to reduce the pressure in which the building is going to exert on the ground. So thereby reducing the thickness of the slab and in some other cases it can even act as a distributing member in case of a plant beam. So we can have different forms of loadings on beams. The first form of loading that can be acted upon on beams include a uniformly distributed load. In the next few minutes, we are going to be seeing a practical example of when you can have a uniformly distributed load on a beam. Then we can also have a point load acting on a beam. Then we also have uniformly varying loads. So these are the three common forms of loads that you can have on a beam, especially in the building structures. So this image shows a beam of about 19.3 meters long. And then you can have series of loads including uniformly distributed load. You also have concentrated load acting at different points along the beam. And you can also have uniformly varying load in forms of triangular loadings. So practically, let us look at how we can have a uniformly point load or uniformly varying load in a building. When we are talking about beams in buildings, loads in buildings actually comes in about four forms. One of it is the self-weight of the beam itself. The self-weight of the beam is calculated from the construction materials in which the beam is made from. Usually when the beam is of concrete, to determine the self-weight, you just have to determine, multiply the density of the construction material if it is concrete by the area of the beam. Then load on beams can also come from loads due to slab and in another situations load from roof so generally in solid slab beams support slab and then distribute the load to the column so the load that have been distributed from the slab to the beam also contributes a, another way in which loads can be applied on beams then we can also have loads due to other beams in structural layout, we usually have what we call primary beams and secondary beams. A primary beam is a beam that supports slabs and is supported majorly by columns or wall. But a secondary beam is another beam that supports slab as well, but in this case, it is being supported by another beam. So a primary beam supports secondary beam. You are going to see example of this. Then we also have loads due to columns. In some situations, depending on the structural layout of the building, you can have column resting directly on beams instead of resting on slab. This applies where a column does not continue to the upper level. So this image show a picture of a structural 3D of a building in which you have beams and columns are slab let's now talk about the self-weight of a beam the self-weight of the beam is usually is going to be acting as a uniformly distributed load on the beam so because self-weight is across the whole beam so you, it is usually computed as a uniformly distributed load and then apply on the beam then loads due to slab can come in two forms we can have uniformly distributed load this is usually common in one-way slab and cantilever slabs. Then you can also have uniformly varying load. This is usually common, is dominant in two-way slabs. We are going to be looking at an example so that you understand this clearly. Then whenever you have a beam supporting another beam, 
The secondary beam that is being supported by the primary beam will act as a point load at the junction where the secondary beam is located along the primary beam. Then whenever you have columns resting on beams, the column is going to be acting as a point load or concentrated load on the beam. So let's take a couple of examples so that you can understand this much more better. But before we do that, if you've not subscribed to this channel and you love what I'm showing you about structural engineering, you can try to, you can consider subscribing, like this video, you can even share it with your colleague so that they can also learn from it. But before we go to the example, you can see that in this picture, we have series of beams that are supporting slab and distributing loads to the column. The beam in the lower part of the building is an example of a primary beam. You can see that it is supporting a beam in this direction. We have this beam that is being supported. So this beam is considered a primary beam. It is supporting this beam in this direction. So whenever you want to analyze this primary beam, this secondary beam that is being supported will be acting as a point load at this junction. Then another example you can see is this beam as well is also supporting a column that does not start from the ground. You can see there's no column here. So this kind of column can be called floating columns. It is supported by beam instead of being supported by another column coming from the foundation. So let us look at a typical example of where you can have uniformly distributed load, uniformly varying load and point load on beams. This example is actually extracted from Design of Structural Elements by Mackenzie. We have about three beams in the horizontal direction and four beams in the vertical direction if you look at the first diagram to the left hand side. So based on this diagram, we are assuming that this first panel here is a one-way slab. This one is a one-way slab. This one as well is a one-way slab. And then this is serving as a two-way slab. So if you look at the second figure, this figure is showing the distribution of load. So if you consider this as panel 1, this panel 2, this panel 3, and this as panel 4. Panel 1 is showing a one-way slab in which this load of the slab is distributed in two equal parts. And this is going to be acting as a uniformly distributed load on the beam. That is... For panel 1, the UDL is divided into 2, the load is divided into 2, and so part of it is going to be acting on beam CE as a uniformly distributed load. The same thing applies to panel 2 and panel 3. The slab is divided into two equal parts and they will be acting directly on the beam as a uniformly distributed load. So, and this is because this slab are considered as one-way slab. But if you look at the fourth panel, which is considered as a two-way slab, you can see that the slab is divided using the yield line theory into four equal parts in such a way that the load is distributed to the four corners or the four edges of the slab. So this load are going to be, they are going to be a uniformly varying load on the member. Then if you also look at beam HG and beam JI, you can see that these beams are not supported by any column whatsoever because in this layout, the columns are only at the corners of the building. So this beam HG and beam GI are going to be acting as a point load on beam CD. So in this case, beam CD, this beam is going to be a primary beam while this beam along the vertical axis is going to be a secondary beam acting as a point load at acting as a point load at point G and I along beam CD. A typical example of that is this. So this is beam CD. So this is the analysis of the loadings that you are going to have on beam CD. So you can see that we have this support. This support here is this column at point C. And we also have another column at point D. So, and this concentrated load are resultant from analysis of this beam H and G. 
that resulted in this concentrated load of 7.5 kN. Then at point I, we also have another concentrated load that is acting on beam CD due to the, due to this beam that is being supported by beam CD. Then you can see a uniformly distributed load that is being acted upon from panel two. Even though this picture does not show the complete diagrammatic representation of all the loadings because you also have another loading from panel four also acting on beam CD and that is going to be a uniformly distributed load. So another image here is beam AB. You can see beam AB, it is acted upon by a uniformly distributed load due to slab, due to panel four. So as you can see, you can analyze this as a uniformly distributed load. But before we end this video, I want to let you know that practically as structural engineers, it is very easier for you to analyze a beam with a uniformly distributed load instead of a beam with a uniformly varying load. So that is why there are a lot of coefficients in which structural engineers use. Instead of using, convert this uniformly varying load to an equivalent UDL load and make you, and this will allow you to analyze it easily. We have a lot of softwares in which you can use to analyze beam and one of them is beam max. I've made a video on beam max in which you can use to analyze a beam with simply supported beam, continuous beam, fixed beam and cantilever beam. You can watch this video now to learn more about beam analysis using free and easy to use structural analysis software. Then another video by the other side is a video that is explaining the analysis of beam using different kind of loading such as point load, concentrated load and uniformly distributed load. Thank you. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you learned from this video. See you in the next one.